Okay, uh, Shalom. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, which begins with the uh, 144,000. That's uh, 12,000 out of each tribe, 12 tribes. 12 times 12 is 144. The head of the elect is uh, Yahweh Shai. It begins with Yahweh Shai. He's the head of the elect. So Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom means peace. All praises and glory is due to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, not God, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, not Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Rakakwadash is the Holy Spirit, literally Spirit Holy, but you say the Holy Spirit, Rakakwadash. Okay, so you're looking at the title of this video. Here's how you know that IUIC is full of shit. <laughs> That's right. Full of shit. Not shit. Shit. Okay, and the subtitle will be They Make Merchandise of You. And uh, what inspired me to do this video was a statement that uh, Elder Manat Zakba of uh, GMS South Carolina made. Uh, the name of the video is, There Will Be Sincere Women of the Elect. And I'm watching it now. It's going on live right about now. And uh, he went into the scripture dealing with uh, Dorcas. Let me see if I can get it on the screen for you. Dorcas was a woman. And, what, and the title that he has, There Will Be Women of the Elect, that, that, that is 100% uh, spot on because... Even before I get that scripture, let me uh, let me get the scripture in First uh, John. Is it? it speaks about the elect lady. So you're gonna have women of the elect. The elect meaning they're chosen to be delivered, to be saved. They're gonna be the women that are gonna be changed, and they're gonna bring forth children to the men that are part of the elect. Okay. It is right here. Second John two. Second John the, the second John the first chapter, the first verse. The elder and this John was uh, one of the apostles, one of the disciples who became an apostle, chosen by Yahweh Shai. The same one who wrote the book of uh, Revelation. And the same one who wrote the book of uh, John. Okay. So John, he wrote many books. And by the way, he was uh, Yahweh Shai's favorite disciple. He was the one that was leaning on Yahweh Shai's bosom when he asked Yahweh Shai, who's going to be the betrayer? He was very close to Yahweh Shai. Okay? Anyway, 2 John 1 and 1, it says, The elder unto the elect lady and her children. So this backs up uh, elder... Elder Manat Zakba in, in the title of his video, there will be, there will be, uh, what is it again? There will be sincere women of the elect. So it says, the elect, or the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. So this woman was in the truth. Even the Apostle John acknowledged her. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. So that right there tells you this woman knew the truth. Now when she going around teaching men, how to worship Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? The answer is no. She just knew the truth. If anything, she was teaching, if she had children, well, yes, yeah, she did have children. What am I saying? It says, and her children. So if she did have children, she would teach them, I'm sure, and then she would teach the other sisters, seeing that she knew the truth. Okay, so that proves, uh, that backs up the title that. Um, that uh, Elder Manad Zakbar put on his video. Now, he spoke about this woman, Dorcas, right? Now, what inspired me to do this video is one of the things that Dorcas did. And I'm going to show you how it ties into, I'm going to use this group, the IUIC, and show you how they're full of shit. Now, Acts 9 and 36. Now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named uh, Tab Tabitha, Tabitha, or Tabitha, Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. So this woman's, this woman's actual name was Tabitha, Tabitha. 
which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. She was full of good works. So let's read about one of those good works that this woman did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had, when they had washed, they laid her up, they laid her in an upper chamber. They laid her in an upper chamber. Where am I at here? Yeah, and for as much as as Lydia or Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter rose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the windows, all the windows, all the widows stood by him weeping and sh and showing the coats and garments this is one of now it says this Dorcas this Tabitha was filled with good works right like it says here Dorcas this woman was full of good works so this is an example or one of the example examples of the good works Tabitha aka Dorcas did right let's read it says and all the windows keep saying windows and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made so that that was one of the good works that Dorcas did aka Tabitha right while she was with them while she was alive right so we could stop there right so that's one of the things that a wife does for her husband she makes Stick with me because I'm going to tie it into how you are see. She makes garments for him. Okay? And we, here we have an example with Tabitha, a.k.a. Dorcas. That's what she, that was one of the good works she did. Right? Let's read it again. And showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. Right? Now, let's go from there to Proverbs, the 31st chapter. Because that's a sign of a, that's one of the signs, one of the signs of a virtuous woman. She makes her husband garments. Okay? Now stick with me because you, you'll see how I tie it in. This is Proverbs 31, which goes into, look at the subheading, description of a worthy woman, right? Then it starts off with who can find a virtuous woman for a price is far above rubies. Now let's read about what a virtuous woman would do, right? Uh, then it goes on to say the heart of a husband to safely trust in her, a sign of a virtuous woman, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of, the, of her life. Now here it is. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. What do you think she's going to do with that wool and flax? Make him a garment. Now, I'm, I see the word wool. I'm thinking of a Garment that could be worn in the winter when it's cold. This is a worthy woman. This is a virtuous woman. She knows her husband needs some, some remnant, so she gets to work. All right? She goes to the market, whatever, buys the wool, buys the flax, whatever she needs, and makes her husband a garment. Right? Okay? She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. I want to stick to the part where she makes garments. Okay? Among the righteous things that she does. So let's keep going. Oh, oh, here we go. Here's another one. Now, uh, we have here in in the 13th verse, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands to do what? To, to make a garment for her husband. Then we jump down to the... Uh, we jump down to the 19th verse. She lay of her hands to the spindle. What's a spindle? What's a spindle? All right. A spindle. A spindle is a definition. Spindle. A slender rounded rod with tapered ends 
used in hand spinning to twist and wind thread from a mass of wool or flax held on a distaff. To make what? Most probably to make garments. Okay? To make garments. Right? So, she lay her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. Okay? That was uh, 19th verse. Let's jump to the 22nd verse. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Again, dealing with the garments. Her clothing is silk and purple. Okay. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Okay. So you get the idea. So... A virtuous woman would make one of the things she would do to show her her worthiness to, to show that she's virtuous is make her husband garments right so you got this group called the IUIC right now they have a garment division where they hire certain sisters right and they make garments. And I'm sure some of those sisters have husbands, right? So, why, if the, if the sisters have husbands, and the sisters can make their husbands garments, why, let's say a brother comes into the IUIC and he has a wife, and she's able to sew. Why can't that brother just have his wife make him a garment. Why does he have to buy a garment? Right? Why does it stick with me? Why does he have to buy a garment from the IUIC? When his wife, let's say he comes into the IUIC group, he has a wife, the wife is able to sew, which is rare nowadays. Most of these women can't boil water, let alone know how to sew. And I was just, when I was in prepare preparation of this video I was thinking about my mother before she passed away one of the things my mother could do was sew as a matter of fact in our house we had a big singer those of you who, who you go back you remember they had a company called singer and they made sewing machines we had a big singer sewing machine in our house which when we uh, left England it was a singer sewing machine that came from England. Okay? And my mother every now and then used to use it. Mend our clothes. I don't remember her actually making a, a garment, but she she knew how to sew. I just don't remember she made garments with it, but she knew how to sew. That much I remember. So one of the skills that a woman is supposed to have is to know how to sew. You know, let's say you have a hole in your socks. There's there's a thing called donning the sock. That's where you mend the hole. You you repair the hole. That's another skill too, learning how to darn a sock. Okay? So the point is, if you have a worthy woman, a worthy wife, she'll take care of you by making you, every now and then, making you a garment, something you can wear. Right? So let's say a IUIC dude joins the IUIC, he comes in, he has a woman that's able to make a garment. Why can't that brother just have his wife make him make himself his own garment? Why does he have to buy a garment from the IUIC? And why, when the scriptures does it say every member of your group has to wear the same garment? The unif uh, so-called uniform garments. Where is that in the scriptures? When Yahweh chose his disciples, which became apostles, were they all wearing the same garment? I, I very much doubt that. That don't even make sense. But hey, you got this IUIC group. Everybody got to wear the same garment. Now, if you got guys that are higher, like your, your captains or your 
or your generals or your captains or leaders of the camp, whatever, they can wear a different garment. But even they got to wear the same garment as another captain or leader would wear. These uniform garments. And mind you, those uniform garments, you got to buy it from them, which those garments were made by brothers who had wives that came in into that group and they all band together and form a, a, a group of women uh, solely uh, their position is to make garments. And then the IUIC men take those garments, they take those garments and they sell them. Pretty expensive too. So if a brother came into that group and he has a woman that's able to sew, <laughs> she can't just make him a garment. As long as she put a border of blue and fringes on it, in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, he's, he's good to go. No, but he got to buy, not only does he have to buy his garment from the IUIC, he has to wear the same garment that everybody else is wearing. Now, where in the hell is that in the scriptures? And then I was meditating on that, and one thing came to mind where the scriptures say, they will make merchandise of you. That's clearly an example. Make merchandise. Let's get that. And that's an example of taking the father's house, which is this knowledge, this truth, and turning it into a house of merchandise. There's no scripture that says you have to wear the same garment as everybody else in a church that you join. No scripture, man. There's no scripture that says you have to wear the same garment that everybody else wears in the church that you join. That's clearly an example of making merchandise of you simpletons that join that group. And you don't ask yourself that question? Why don't you ask the great illustrious Bishop Nathaniel, where's the scripture that says, I got to wear the same garment as the next man? How come I can't just come into your group and wear my own garment? I got my woman. She makes garments for me. Beautiful garments, I might add. Why can't I wear the garment that she makes for me? As long as it has a border of blue and fringes. Now, what is uniform? Because they call it uniform. What is uniform is that everybody got to wear a border of blue and fringes. That's according to the law. Numbers 15 and 37. A rim band of blue and fringes. That's uniform. That's lawful. But where does it say everyone got to wear the same garment? In this case, the t-shirt, which the t-shirt is not a garment. It's an undergarment. Look up the history on the t-shirt. It was invented around the late 1800s, 1898, 1899, somewhere around there. Prior before that, you didn't have no goddamn t-shirts. And you certainly didn't have them in the days of uh, the prophets, and the days of Yahweh and the disciples, which became apostles. You didn't have no goddamn t-shirt. You had garments, garments down to the foot, man. So where do they get off passing these t-shirts as garments? So they, they get these, these cheap-ass t-shirts, probably mixed fabric, which they're always talking about, yeah, the laws, the statutes, the commandments. I guarantee some of those t-shirts that they put the border of blue and fringes on, I guarantee you it's mixed fabric. 50% cotton, 50% polyester, 50% whatever. Not 100%, because 100% cotton is expensive. So I'm pretty sure they'll cut corners around them, them funky ass t-shirts that they sell. I'm pretty sure they'll cut corners just to make profit, because after all, they're not profit, profits, they're profiteers. And that's one of the reasons why they set up that garment industry within the IUIC. To profit off the stupidity of the majority of people that join that group. They're making merchandise of them. This is John 2 and 16. And said unto them that sold doves, now today they're selling garments. <laughs> said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Those are the words of Yahweh Shai. You got a modern day form of that now. Taking this knowledge, which is the heavenly father's house, 
and turn it into a house of merchandise. Everybody got to wear the same garment and they must buy that garment from the IUIC. That garment must be IUIC regulated. You can't see the angle? Meanwhile, King Nathaniel is getting fat off your ignorance. It's one of the reasons why he can afford jet setting all over the world. Because he's making a mint off those garments. Everybody in the IUIC got to wear the same garment. Now where the hell is the scripture that supports that? Where? What scripture is that? What scripture says that I got to wear the same garment as the next man? What I got to do is have a board of blue and fringes. I ain't got to wear the same garment as the next man. That's clearly an example of a, a leader making merchandise of his congregation. Let's read 2 Peter 2 and 3. And through covetousness, right? Through covetousness shall they with feign words, and King Nathaniel is good for that, with those feign words, those bomba bombastic speeches. Look that word up. <coughs> Mr. Bombastic, semi-fantastic. That's King Nathaniel, Mr. Bombastic. Them bombastic scriptures, them scriptures, them bombastic words <laughs> that come from that guy with, with his antics, right? Through covetousness shall they with feign words, bombastic script, uh, keep saying script, bombastic speeches, <laughs> with feign words, Make merchandise of you. And there's your example. Whether you believe it or not, understand it or not. You don't have to buy the same garment as the next man. Especially if you got a woman that makes garments. Why can't my woman just make a garment for me and I go to the I go to the class, the camp, whatever, and wear my own garment? Why I gotta wear a garment like the next man? The only thing that's gotta be uniform is the board of blue and fringes. But see, that's a way for Nathaniel to force you to buy his garment. And the money goes into his pocket, right? You got to buy his garment. <laughs> if you want to join the IUIC, you got to buy their garment. You got to have their logo on your garment, right? Is that not an example of them making merchandise of you? Like it says here, 2 Peter 2 and 3, And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment, remember our power is the power of judgment, you don't think the day is coming when Yahweh Shemi Shai going to judge them guys on that? You don't think they know what they're doing? You don't think that their conscience, well maybe their conscience is dead, but you don't think their conscience alerts them, alert them that that's wrong? Ain't no scripture justifying that I got to wear the same garment as the next man. The only thing I got to do is make sure my garment has a border of blue and fringes. That's according to the law. That's it. I don't ha have to wear the exact same garment as the next guy. There's no scripture that supports that. Again, I'm using the example of Yahweh Shai and the Twelve. When he chose his disciples, I'm pretty sure each of them wore their own garment. As long as they had the border of blue and fringes. Yahweh Shai didn't issue a standard garment. This is Yahweh Shai's standard garment. If you're going to be with Yahweh Shai, you wear his standard garment. That didn't exist, man. Yahweh Shai didn't do that. Yahweh Shai didn't issue his own standard garment. This is Yahweh Shai's standard garment. It says, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. So even now as I speak, that judgment is being prepared. And that's why 1 Peter 4 and 17, it says judgment is going to begin with them that know that they're Israelites. There's a lot of things that these wicked ass Israelites are doing that they're going to get judged for by the by Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. Every last one of them, man. And that's one of the things they're doing. Making merchandise of their congregation. Just no different than them poverty pimps in these wacky tacky churches. Guys like Geno Jennings and and uh, who else? And that and that big overgrown pufta. You know, if you don't know what a pufta is, I suggest you look it up. That big overgrown pufta, ugly pufta. What's his name? The hell is his name? Look like a rhinoceros. 
that guy. Another example of one who makes merchandise of his congregation. I forgot his name. His name, you brothers know who I'm talking about. You can put his name in the comment section. Okay? Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So you got to watch out for these guys that their main motivation is profit, is money, not the truth. Okay? They have no problem making merchandise out of you. They have no problem capitalizing on your, your ignorance and stupidity. And that's just one example. You got to buy that garment. You got to dress like everybody else. Or else you ain't in the truth, according to them. It's total bullshit. And that's why I say, in conclusion of this lesson, that's why I say, here, here's how you know the IUIC is full of shit. There's many examples that prove they're full of shit, but that's just another example. They will make merchandise of you. Now, I challenge you to find in GMS Great Millstone where we issue a standard garment. If you join GMS, you got to wear this standard garment. I challenge you to find any evidence of where we have a GMS logo and you got to wear your garment with that GMS logo on it. Doesn't exist, man. Because we're motivated by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, as it is written, the Holy Spirit flees uh, the, the, the spirit of uh, uh, deceit. Okay, the Holy Spirit flees the spirit of deceit. These guys are coming in deceit, making merchandise of their congregation. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you were edified. See you in the next one.